Duskwood wakes up in what is now a semi-familiar space, one of the mine workers' rooms, sitting above the Balrog's labyrinth. In the last, she managed to come away with a very interesting book, a book that she hopes that Valzine will find interesting. She has rested, she has recovered, and she has spent the day coughing away. And as she rises this evening, she does so still tired, even though she has slept for most of the day. This cold is wearing her down, but her resolve is strong. Rising with the night, Duskwood will push on. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. No hope. We're, we're going to be picking up all of our bits and pieces in just a moment, but we're going to be having something to eat to get started. So let's start chowing down on some nice smoked meat. We want to make sure that we've got enough space to uh, drink some water here as well. Wonderful. And we'll be snacking pretty much as soon as we can because we are really trying to keep those calories on at the moment. Because even though Dusk is consuming more calories than she is spending, she is still using those calories in other ways when it comes to her telekinetic abilities, and just in general, she needs to eat way more because of her metabolism. So, I'm just going to go through and put on the rest of our equipment that we've got down here, and we shall be wielding our book. Now, I did spend a little bit of time before Dusk went to sleep uh, reading. We read a lot about Mage Armor, and right now we can see with our focus at 80, we only have a 30% chance of actually failing at casting the spell. So I'm intrigued to cast it now, seeing as we've got it at level 5. We'll see if we can actually see what protection it provides. Oh, and we, we are going to need to put that on the ground. Oh, did we actually manage to put the book away? It looks like we might have actually done that. No way, we've got enough space to put it into our pack now. Well, isn't that wonderful? So, let's give that a shot again. We're going to try and cast Mage Armor. There we go, successful. And it does light up quite a bit of the area around us here. And it is considered to be an item that we are wearing. And it's going to last a little bit longer than it has in the past. So, still, we don't seem to be able to see the protection that it's giving us exactly. I do wonder if we might witness that here, okay? It doesn't actually offer us any protection whatsoever. Wearing multiple items in your personal aura or on your mouth is adding encumbrance there. So our gnarled claws are kind of interacting here, but they don't seem to be interacting negatively. I'm not seeing additional encumbrance being put on there. But yeah, we don't actually get any protection from mage armor as of yet, which I don't know if that is uh, working as it's meant to, unless there is some other kind of mystical protection that we're getting from it here. A summoned magic armor. It gets shinier and sturdier with each spell level, and it's affected by your intelligence. Our intelligence is 13, which is relatively high. Yeah, protection, negligible protection. Interesting. I do wonder if there's just a threshold that we have to get over for that to be considered uh, useful at all. But right now, at level 5, it's already pretty high up there. That's only 10 levels until we've maxed it out at this stage. Obviously our spellcraft will also affect us to a degree, but our spellcraft has been increasing because we've been just reading more in general, so our spellcraft is actually up at 4 currently. Oh, okay, and <laughs> I was just having a look at our mutations here. I do not know when this popped up here, but Dusk is considered a pyromaniac now. I do not know when we got that as a negative trait. Luna, eat your heart out. Okay, so setting fires um, can and will improve our mood. Sure, okay, and you know what? It's a little destructive, but I suppose it might make a little bit of sense to try and burn this place down. Um, we could probably leave this intact, but going over in the direction of where the, um, yeah, mine entrance is, we might just want to try and burn down this here. Let's see about doing that. We'll use our refillable butane lighter, start a fire, and our survival skill increases, and we happily light a fire. So if we go a while without doing that, we will actually start to suffer negative effects. So that's something that I'm going to kind of need to try and keep an eye on where possible. Now, unfortunately, um, we are seeing a little bit more than we would in the fog. So I was going to say... The light is probably affecting us in a negative sense here, but no, it is actually pushing back a little bit of the fog, so the mage armor is doing something for us there. We're going to have our safe mode turned on, and I believe 
it's probably about time for us to head with the extra books that we've got so far and go see if Valzane places any value on those books. Yeah, I think we're going to go back through the forest because that was relatively safe the first time that we passed through, so let's look at making a similar journey here. Okay, it wasn't an exact path, but we've made it through that section of forest, and now it's kind of pretty much a straight shot up and in the direction of the Forge of Wonders. We just need to be wary of that portal there. Oh, Pachyanosauruses. A lot of them at that. Well, hello there. Now, intriguingly enough, we could potentially tame one of these Pachyanosauruses. Uh, I don't know how they're going to be around the dead, though. So that could still be a issue. We do have cattle fodder. <laughs> it's a... It's a thought, maybe. I think having a proper rope and saddle would help when it comes to the future. Hey, Forgeborn, are we, we chill? We're chill? Okay, that's good. Let's, let's keep it that way. And let's get on the other side of the river here. And we've made it inside, safe and sound. Hey there, Valzane. Now, I'm relatively sure that we have digitized all of our books, but we're just going to be certain of that. So let's go through to our e-ink tablet PC. We'll go and activate that. And first of all, we'll just see if we have any uh, cards we can download from. We've got one. Okay. Oh, and the Forge Demon cast Hellfire Belch at us from behind the glass. Good for them. Right, so store books. Okay. Uh, we haven't actually stored any of these books. So let's make sure that we do that. It's going to take an hour and 20 seconds for us to do so. Let's get to it and ignore all that noise. I kind of do like that we've just uh, stood here the whole time taking pictures of these books. While we're coughing up a storm, Valzane's just waiting patiently on the other side here for us to be done. Okay, Valzane, let's have a chat, eh? So we only have... We have the single Linares at the moment, okay. We can sell back this lair map, and oh, wow, it's only worth 57 cents. I really thought it would be worth more. Maybe if we hadn't actually read the book, it would be worth more. Um, okay, is there anything that we actually want for, you know, <laughs> the amount that we've got? We could potentially try and sell a few other things to try and make up the difference. Um, Ogre's Strength could be fun especially if we were to combine that with our other strength spell it seems like it would be kind of wild this is a magus spell though and i don't know if we want to go down the magus route just yet although if we start to read a magus spell it'll tell us what the opposing force is there so i think yeah the only other book that we would potentially want to get here is holy blade which, yeah, I would like to get that, but we would need to sell a little bit more here first. I, I really don't think we can make up that difference. Um, <laughs> just looking at everything that we've got here, yeah. Finding those coins is certainly the best value for us. We do know that selling uh, fresh berries is also an option, and seemingly selling cannabis wax is another option. Um, there is quite a bit of that nearby, but we'd need a, a fair amount of that for us to actually be able to make a proper profit here. Yeah. I tell you what we'll probably try and do is we could try and settle for just a Daenerys. So if we were to trade for just one of them, I think we can maybe make up the five um, dollars worth of worth. Or maybe we can't. Like even the mithril ingots are, uh, yeah, a lot. I mean, we could always just trade a Daenerys ourselves and just end up with a credit, or just leave with that credit, because he seems to remember how much we have there. So, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of does work out for me. We don't need to worry about carrying them around at this stage. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's a, an okay way to do that. Now, something that I was wanting to try and have a look at is our zoom lens here. We still need to have a tool that has mana focusing and a chisel of some kind, but a high quality lens, we should be able to get that from taking apart a smartphone or even our binoculars. The question is, do we want to take apart the binoculars now before we have the correct kind of chisels and whatnot? Also, also, I wouldn't mind seeing if we actually have access to that, um, that longsword recipe. I think that our skills need to be a bit better before we can actually make use of it. Our fabrication, that is, so we'd have to read some other fabrication books before we're at that point. So, the night is still young. Where do we go from here? Well, there is a possibility that we might be able to earn a little bit more coin 
by searching the surrounding area. There is still this interesting looking thing. We don't know what the purpose of it is, but it is from a magicalism origin. The other layers that we have that we can investigate, um, they are a fair bit further away. It's a bit of a walk for us to get to them. But then we do have these outposts and these massive goblin encampments that we could have a look at. Now we may be able to try and trade with the goblins. We know that both the goblins and the orcs tend to hunt people. <laughs> and by people, I mean humans, raven folk, lizard folk, the whole shebang. They fit in very well with Elliot. So, is it morally correct for us to just wander on in there and create a whole load of havoc? Maybe not. But if we try to trade, if we attempt to communicate, then yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But I think before we go down that route, we do have this as an option to investigate first of all. So we're going to make our way back down towards Stockholm, and we are going to try and make our way across the bridge. I do remember it being a little messy, a little busy up here, but we'll see. Also, clothing might be an okay option for us when it comes to trading with Thalzane especially if it's fresh clothing, but then again, this is no hope. The chances of there actually being anything there is pretty slim. Uh, we are wandering in the dark now, which I'm a little bit more comfortable with. Let's see how far we can make it before we run into trouble. And we've already seen a little bit of that in the form of a zapper over towards the west, so now we're just going to have to be a little cautious as we start to approach. We might as well check out that clothing store while we are here. Just see if there is anything actually here at all. Okay, we have got a leather kilt, I see, poor fitting, uh, another kilt, this is a kilt shop, at least it seems to be that way, we'll check the bathroom, nothing in there at the moment, yeah, two kilts and that's it, okay, well, <laughs> that ain't much good, let's just continue moving on, the pizza parlor could have some things for us, but yeah, I'm not going to hold my breath, we're just going to go nice and quietly through the city streets here. And we're in slightly familiar territory. We have seen this during the day. We're already across the bridge on the other side. So we're going to be heading straight past that goblin encampment directly over towards the east here. And because I really have no idea what we're going towards here, we are going to go as cautiously as we possibly can. So rock floors and some upturned dirt. I feel like at any point now we could run into really big trouble so let's get a few basics up uh i don't know if we want to go for mage armor here specifically so we'll hold on to that for now but we will go for our momentum alteration we'll also go and put our electrical discharge on and our voltaic strikes and we're feeling a strange tingling sensation as we activate those powers coughing up a storm anything that is around here will kind of know that we are here okay okay this is this is fine okay right there is a path upwards another path upwards is this like a strange pyramid of some kind uh not exactly a pyramid but um is that going up it is going up okay all right we can see treetops here we can see a way down uh what the hell are we looking at here this is intriguing um is there more to it? We may have to smash our way in here. We're going to turn on our light. Oh, oh okay, I didn't see that. There's a skeletal zombie in there. Um, well, hi. <laughs> we walked straight past an entrance. All right, let's take a good crack at you, eh? Skeletal zombie. A few cracks there, and we've got you down. Okay. And what is that there? Just gravel. Sure, we have a way down. Ooh, those are coffins. Uh, okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, a humble wooden casket for the respectful burial of the dead. While a standard practice before all that has happened, it is now a rare honor for one to be given a proper final resting place. An honor that countless will likely never receive. Um, okay, so we can't, we can't crack those open. Uh, maybe we can. I mean, deconstruct furniture. I'm intrigued here. Desecrating the dead, not a great thing to do. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. Can we, we can deconstruct. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look here. Uh, it was empty. It was empty. Interesting. Okay, well, that gives us a little bit of information. Um, 
seemingly there isn't actually anyone in these coffins yet, so they may have already gotten up and are now walking around. That's a possibility. We'll peek down this ramp. This is a little spooky. Um, this is fine. That's another skeletal zombie. Okay. Seems like the skeletal zombies are pretty common here, so this could be something to do with necromancy, maybe? In skeletal zombies. Oh, yeah, we got a zombie necromancer. And what is that down there? Uh, that is a stone altar. So the necromancer is a little tricky, but we should be able to manage them okay. So we're first of all going to knock them to the ground there with our telekinetic force. Take a few good strikes at them. Dusk just absolutely annihilating that necromancer there. Okay, so altar, what do you what do you do? What are you? Just just a big stone altar most commonly used in questionable rituals. Can we move you at all? We grab it, it feels really heavy. Uh, I'm intrigued. I want to try and move this thing just because I want to move it. So we're going to enhance our strength here, and we can indeed move the altar. Okay. Um, neat. <laughs> there we go. That's that. Let's keep on moving here. Um, alright. Is, is that it? We just got a necromancer down here, and not much else. It looks like maybe there also should be uh, coffins here as well. We're just going to try and smash these ones open and I guess there is a possibility that there could be something in them. So using her enhanced strength, Dusk is going to go around and just um, pop these coffins because yeah, getting necromancer vibes from here 100%. Hmm, just trying to see if there could be anything else potentially secret here. The only other thing that I was thinking is that perhaps maybe the altar might have needed to be moved to one of these spaces. I mean, we could just hear it moving around. Um, we're not seeing any effect from pushing it into the corners there. Yeah. Um, well, we'll go and destroy this one as well. Unless, of course, yeah, it is like a... You need to have something on those things. I doubt that that is the case. I mean, we can move around a few though, can't we? I don't... Yeah, I don't actually think we have enough of these things now to have all of these gravel squares covered. There we go. That's in place. Same story here with that one. Okay, I'll head back, back down below and just see if this would be remotely possible. Uh, not with what we have left down here. I don't think that that is a thing. I mean, we could maybe try and grab the bodies and, and move them on over so that there is something on them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it could be that we had to have coffins on those spaces to get something to happen, but I've never seen anything like that in Cataclysm, so I don't know if that's the case. Um, yeah, regardless, um, we've cleared this place, I think. I mean, we're not really seeing much else going on here. We can go right on top of it. We can have a good look around. But yeah, whatever this thing is, is cleared. Hmm. Well then, <laughs> I guess that leaves things like the goblin encampment. Before we actually try and tackle any of the encampments though, I think it's probably worth us going and investigating the outpost because um, we've definitely been to orc outposts before, we know what they are like, and there's a strong chance that that goblin outpost is very much like those orc encampments. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> we... We just fell asleep. We did feel like we were being watched briefly as well. That's that's always fun. Thankfully, when we do seem to fall asleep like that, it isn't ever for all that long, so that's good. But yes, I think the best thing for us right now is going to be trying to head back up towards the goblin camp, because what I was going to say is that we have seen that the goblins seemed to replace the orcs. Those orcish encampments that we had been to with both Dusk and Elliot had a bit of a population shift. So we're going to set our path over in that direction. Let's go. Let's get a move on. Damn, okay, we made it there pretty fast. Dusk <laughs> navigating the night and we got ourselves a bugbear. Oh, we don't actually have a tile for the bugbear yet, it seems. But a bugbear is an enormous grey-green humanoid here, over two meters tall with thick fur at their joints and long tufted ears. This creature no longer has much resemblance to a goblin other than the color. Despite their size, they move in almost complete silence and hold a long bladed weapon in their hand. Bugbears are incredibly dangerous. They've got a fair amount of reach in D&D. So, we are going to be cautious with this one here. Um, in saying that though, 
I think we're going to try and use far hand to pull them in towards us. Um, okay, we don't seem to be able to do that. So I guess, I guess we won't do that. Instead, we'll just try and use our knockdown to get them on the ground. Oh, we do not have a chance to hit them much further than here. Okay, um, so, oh, it's not far hand. It's force shove that we need to do. Yeah, pull you in towards us there and then immediately we're going to try and hit you with the knockdown. And that has knocked that bugbear down. They are staggered. We take a good strike at them there. And we actually gain some experience. Oh, that was to our spell. I think we're as high as we're going to get with our unarmed combat. But we can see that the weapon of the bugbear has been forced out of their hands. That's good news. Uh, that's Tai Chi working well for us. We're gently disarming the bugbear. We struggle. We hit it with that double palmed strike as it struggles to stand. It's stunned. It's bleeding. We're going to move in, push the advantage here. We managed to block nearly all the damage it struck at us then. Managing to stab it with our horns. The fight is very much in Dusk's favor. Uh, we don't seem to have access to its blade. Perhaps it was too badly blunted. But we do have a goblin warrior that is now charging Dusk down in the night. Ooh, and an orc warrior as well. So we're not quite ready to be fighting them right now. Our stamina ain't great. So I think what we're going to try and do is just get a little bit of distance. Oh boy. Yeah, but there's a lot of them up there. Okay, so we're going to get much more distance here. And they should theoretically give up after just a little bit. We're going to see if we can get some of our abilities up and running. So electrical discharge and then our voltaic strikes. And then let's see if we can catch our breath. We can. Coughing heavily while we do. Okay, let's start making our way back. Now, I guess we need to decide if we are going to go in with Tai Chi, or if we're going to do something like the Storm Fist, because we could go for that as an option. Our claws right now, though, are going to do more damage, so I think we're going to stick with them. The Orc Warrior looks like they're going to charge in towards us. Let's hit them with a knockdown, and that works. Down and staggered. That gives us a really good advantage. And we hear an explosion then. That wasn't from us exactly. We managed to stun them again and we knocked their weapon out of their hand. So yet again, I don't think we are actually going to see the weapon. Oh no, we, we are in that instance. A combat machete. Not bad. They're also wearing a scrap helmet here as well. Waiting a second, we can see a goblin warrior charging out of the darkness and dusk just with one decent strike there. Takes them down. Okay, so let's just check that wallet there. Okay, I think what we're going to do is set up an auto pickup. And we're just going to type dinner. And let's see. Test. Denatured alcohol. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just type in Denaris and see if that does work. Yes, indeed it does. It is set now. So if we do walk over someone and they actually have a Denaris, we will go and pick that up. So we're saving those changes. Wonderful. Scrap helmet. We're not going to be able to do anything with that right now. The combat machete we will be leaving. If we do find a long sword on any of them, though, we are going to look at going for that. Oh boy. Okay, this is where things are going to get a little bit trickier. Um, yeah, we are going to try and send one of them away from us. So we're going to use force shove to go and push that orc warrior away, just so we can deal with this goblin warrior uh, by themselves if we can. A torso encumbrance is kind of throwing us off balance a little bit there. It looks like. The Goblin Warrior seemed to be a little bit harder to hit then. Stunned and zapped. Our stamina is still looking okay right now. We have a few sparks around us. Turning around towards that Orc, we missed that strike then, which is very dangerous. We managed to bite and hit them then. Zapped and bleeding. That's good. Let's keep it that way. We'll get a few more strikes off here. Okay. We are going to have to start moving back soon. Oh, or maybe we won't. We just took down that Orc incredibly quickly. Turning around, striking at that one there bleeding that's pretty well damaged let's see if we can finish off that orc warrior oh they bled to death okay so now we've just got the goblin warrior here shattered armor and they're also zapped so continue striking there we're too stuffed up to fight effectively that's the uh the cold really coming in to affect us that's another warrior down another approaches as spikes as sparks were all around her in the night lighting up the area around her dusk spins 
and takes the goblin warrior down. Okay, so let's take a moment to catch our breath. We have spotted yet another goblin warrior and we're hearing another approaching. Our abilities are still up, so we're gonna hold our ground here. We've taken down yet another, spinning around to face this one. We immediately disarm them, doing no damage, but disarming them is great. So let's keep on striking there, waiting. We should be able to get another good palm strike and we do. This goblin warrior is not long for this world. Catching our breath again, we were able to actually fully do it there. So we're gonna start smashing the corpses that are around us. And then let's see if there's anything that we actually wanna try and take from them here. That's a really decent rucksack, but we're gonna leave that be for now. I am gonna check out the arm guards versus what we are using at the moment. We have some antidepressants on this uh, goblin here. So we're gonna go and take those for now. The smartphones, we may be able to get a proper lens from them, but we'll see. We will see about that. The scrap boots down there don't fit. So let's just have a look here. Currently we are using the cut resistant arm sleeves. We want to see them against the arm guards. Okay, the total coverage isn't as good. The encumbrance is much higher as well. Breathability is pretty average too. I mean, a scrap metal. It is also worn on the outer layer, so we may be able to wear that with everything else. Okay, let's see if we can chuck on these arm guards. I'm a little wary about us wearing too much armor, but it seems like we might be able to get away with this. Um, rigid armor with armor that has no pockets for armor. Okay. But yeah, we're not seeing a negative effect there. Our arms are at eight encumbrance at the moment, but having a look, we've got the sleeves underneath there and the arm guards on top. Okay. I gotta say that's, that's pretty good. In the areas that it is covering, it's doing so pretty pretty well. We've got a scrap helmet on this orc warrior here. Okay, so getting a little bit closer, we need to make sure that we try and keep our abilities up. That's a, that's a blood orc? Okay. Like a goblin, but stretch and exaggerated until they're as tall as a human, but much more heavily muscled, wearing improvised armor and carrying an enormous metallic club. There are red streaks all over their skin, like they had bathed themselves in blood. Oh boy, okay, let's get ready for this one here then. We are gonna hit them, Oh, uh, attack, stop casting, no. How bad is that attack? Okay, all right, we did manage to get like a little bit of a counter attack then. I think that was because of our, um, our charge across us. Yeah, the zap did some work there, awesome. Okay, downed, zapped, and staggered. Let's take a really good strike there, fantastic. We sliced them with our claws, shattered their armor, and we managed to stab them with our horns. Brilliant, brilliant work. Dusk, good job. Turning around to face this goblin warrior. They are pretty dodgy, but we are still doing a good job at striking them where possible. And that is another bugbear. So they can probably try and strike us from the other side. I don't know if they do have the reach. Maybe not. That was such a wicked bite though. We found a gap in their stomach armor, dealing 46 damage. Damn. All right, let's knock this bugbear to the ground. We succeed at that, palm striking them. We've knocked them back. They're still downed. So we're gonna keep on striking them here. We disarm them, wonderful. And we're just seeing so many stabs, bites, heavy arterial bleeding. We got that bugbear down. And they've got some decent equipment on them, although it is extra large because these are big creatures. The combat machetes, they are quite cool as well. Looking at the total damage they can do, they're really decent. I do think the long swords are gonna be better though, so I'm kind of holding out for one. Great pipe mace on this blood orc. Yeah, decent, decent bash, but we also have access to some pretty cool bash weapons. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to trial one of them out here. It depends how long we can actually have it lasting. Eight minutes and two seconds, the storm hammer. Sure, let's try, oh, it's too difficult for us to call right now. We can do storm fist, but we can't call the storm hammer right now. That, that's fine. Maybe we will go storm fist, eh? Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get that going. Yep, there we go, we cast storm fist. Let's go and wield those. And we are gonna have to change over to brawling because Tai Chi does not work when you're storm fisting. <laughs> um, Okay, unfortunately it does kind of screw our sight. So we're gonna turn on our light here. Oh boy, and we can see a walk charging towards us. So let's get ready to face this thing. There's a, oh boy, that's a troll and that's many wargs. Okay, what's our casting ability like right now? Because if we could get off a lightning bolt, it only has a range of four right now. 
I'm just intrigued to see. I mean, that's a, that's a decent looking line. Uh, we, we failed to cast that there though. Ooh, man. Okay. Um, I think that they're probably going to be rather fast. Uh, I'm going to turn off the light here. Um, I, I think that this is going to screw us. We actually need to drop Stormfist now. We're going to leave that on the ground there. Um, because, yeah, too dangerous otherwise. We're going to change back to Tai Chi. And we're going to see if we can face this thing. We're going to hit it with a knockdown. Okay. We got it before it could get us. Downed and staggered is a great position for us to be in. It looks like this thing does have quite a bit of health though. We're getting some really good strikes in here, but there are also points at which we are doing no damage whatsoever. We did manage to get that one down just as all three of them show up here. This would be brilliant if we had a grenade or something else that we could hit, you know, with a um, area of effect. And we do have some area of effect spells. Unfortunately though, our focus is terrible right now and I think it's probably because we're tired and well our mood doesn't seem to be all that great at the moment if we actually have a look at our morale sleepiness level is kind of affecting us we lit a fire so that's nice we should have more focus now than we actually do repulse the monkey I guess that's part of our tai chi right yeah and the interesting thing about our tai chi is that so much of it is built upon our perception which isn't actually great so pretty much any martial art form is going to be better for us than tai chi but dusk is still super super deadly with it you know the other thing that we could do is just get our rifle out and start popping them with that that is also an option and it's not a bad option <laughs> let's see yeah lightning blast just it's too difficult for us to get off right now we could potentially get lightning bolt stop casting no okay oh boy looks like we might just be able to get this off in time let's see oh okay we do actually successfully hit them with that that's good zapped over here and that troll is kind of frightening um so we're going to turn we're going to start running it is slower than us when we are running. That is good to see. And we can actually see a little bit better than them, which is fantastic. Are we going to be able to get our rifle out in time? I hope so. Yeah, no, we totally can. And starting to move back towards here. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to start to steady up here as they start to get closer. All right. We're going to wait until this walk is like right on top of us. All right. First shot there, 47 damage. I want to make sure that we aren't doing um, like a set aim. Okay, it is set to immediate right now, which is good. That's where we want it to be. We're going to fire again. 37 damage. Really good. Firing yet again. 43. Heavy arterial bleeding. One more time here. Okay, we miss. And oh boy, they do get a few attacks off on us there. And um, we actually kind of got a little deafened in that process there. We're going to keep on moving here, getting a little bit further back. Okay, we need to try and manage our stamina as best we can. We're seeing Goblin Warriors, okay, up by our Storm Fist currently. We just made a fair bit of noise by shooting our rifle, so we got to expect that there is going to be more. And that's a bugbear. I wasn't expecting a bugbear right now. The bugbear we could probably still try and fight off with just our fists, so let's drop that to the ground. We still have Tai Chi selected. Managed to stun them. That's wonderful. Keep on striking here. Okay. That is some good work. We're stuffed up, aren't we? Yep, we sure are. Let's go pick that rifle up off the ground. The AR-15 is back in our hands. Okay, we've got a Goblin Warrior and a Warg here. So the Warg is what we are going to want to be focusing on here, if possible. Oh, that was an arrow. That was an arrow, and this is a lot. This is a lot that we're dealing with here. Okay, there's shrieking going on currently. The wargs are what I'm fearing the most. The troll also, I don't know what that is going to be uh, fully capable of. So we want to make sure that we are doing these short little sprints just to be getting some more distance here. That warg getting that much closer is a little frightening. Six damage with a grazing hit. Okay, I think at this point we just need to try and get away. We could try and lose them in the forest here. That's not a bad, you know, choice for us to make. Ideally, if we could kind of try and just lure them down towards this fire lookout tower, we could use the fence to try and take down a load of them. If we could do that, I would be super, super happy. Man, this warg is right on our ass, huh? Sure as hell is. Okay, we're bleeding right now. Let's just turn on our light. It's pretty bad. That's a pretty bad situation. Uh, but right now, I think we might be able to still outpace them. There's a goblin slinger there as well. We've got 13 goblin warriors. How far? I mean, that's pretty far to try and make it. Okay, yeah, and we are going to have to be doing these little sprints in between. 
Uh, whenever we are going diagonal, we are going slower. And as soon as we slow, <laughs> as soon as we slow our roll, we just lose our stamina altogether. So we need to stay running for now to get a little bit more of a head start than we've got. We'll turn off our light source and we're just going to keep on running until we can't run anymore. We can always turn back to try and uh, to pick them up. Um, let's see if we can't get our breath back. We've spotted a goblin warrior. Stop catching our breath. Okay, we're just going to keep on moving. It looks like the goblin warriors can actually catch us. So turning around to face this one here. Okay, this is where it's getting more than a little dangerous for us. Let's get our rifle. Do we stay in the same spot? No, we keep moving, we keep going south. We're not losing stamina while we're just walking like this. We are bleeding out of our right arm. That's okay, that is okay. We're a little bit further away again now. We'll try and catch our breath. We've got it back fully. Let's turn our light back on. Okay, so now at this point, I would like to try and see if we could get the rest of them to follow us. So we're gonna head back up in the direction that we were in. Okay, we've got a brainless zombie right now, which is interesting. Uh, we do have some more blood up here. We do have a warg. We have a few wargs that are going to be going for that specifically. And then the wargs are just going to start charging us down. So that's the one. The one at the back is the one that we damaged the most. Let's just get ready to try and do as much damage as possible as they start to get closer here. Okay, we hit that one for 26. Fire again. It does take a second to fire, so we, are, we have to keep that in mind. Go a little bit further back again. Start to steady up on this one here. Fire. Decent damage, 40 is good. It's bleeding, it's gonna start trying to make it in towards us. If we can keep them in a line, it means that there's a strong chance that we are gonna hit at least one of them. I'm gonna try and see if we can get lucky here. Get a strike off on this one. We do, 40 damage, bad bleeding. That should theoretically bleed to death. Let's continue moving straight down for now. Okay, it's still badly bleeding. I wanna take a shot at it because we do have a few behind it. So again, there's a chance we'll get it, boom. Nice, that is some good news. Now the one that is currently injured, it's just minor bleeding. If we could take that out, that would be grand because we know that we can actually fight these things in melee, it seems. Oh, that one's down, wonderful. And then we've already got another one that's injured. Take another shot at you. Uh, I'm okay with even just like what we're getting with regular aim at the moment. 37 is really good, okay. Ooh, 46, heavy arterial bleeding. This thing's gonna be dead before long, but we've got a lot of stamina, so we're gonna turn around. Excellent, it is already dead. We're gonna start steadying up on this wall here, and we're just gonna stay with the rifle for now because it is safer for us when we're dealing with these quite dangerous creatures. If we could get a warg for ourselves, if we could tame a warg, that would be unbelievable. But finding a warg pup, I mean, maybe we can do that at one of the goblin encampments. Maybe that's a possibility. But for now, I'm happy with that. Oversized locusts, eh? Okay, well, let's drop their AR for now and see if we can face them. Oh, we can. All right, not too much trouble there. Another oversized locust is coming for us. All right, we'll take a strike at you. Go for another. Okay, and we've got some zombies that are here now as well. We'll strike down this locust. Uh, we'll try and hit it a few times here. It looks like it's trying to run away. All right, we'll just take down that zombie because it's grabbing us. Oh, and there is the troll. Okay, so how deadly are you going to be? A monstrous green-skinned green humanoid, almost three meters tall, but as thin as the average human. Trolls are renowned for their thick hides and natural regenerative abilities. Interesting. Let's put the bug between us and it. The rifle is currently on the ground, which is not great. Um, we should still have some of our charges up. The electrical discharge is on, but we don't have the other benefits right now. Um, okay, the troll... The troll is biting the locust right now, and um, okay, we've got others here as well now. That's not great. Let's just turn on the light. Oh, they're all here. They're all here, and we don't have our freaking rifle. Uh, but there is a spitter zombie down there. Oh boy. Okay, we really need to start running. Okay, I want to try and see if we can go up and in this direction. I want to try and pull the um, item towards us on the ground. So we're going to use far hand. We're going to pull the rifle that's there towards us. Stop targeting. No, I want to pull the rifle that's on the ground. It thinks I'm trying to target the Goblin Warrior, but I'm not. Okay, we can't grab that. So we're gonna have to take them on a little bit of a run for now. I'm okay with that. We're gonna backtrack, and then um, the second that we can, we're gonna, we're gonna sprint down there and we're gonna pick up that damn rifle. Okay, here goes the sprint. Okay, so it is down here. It's right by the freaking troll. Of course it is, okay. Well, let's get further away again. Oh, lucky that we are dealing with those slingers. Okay, around and around. Because yeah, we're gonna need the rifle. Or maybe not. 
Maybe not. If we can control their numbers, if we can have them attack us in smaller groups, if we can kind of back into something, then that could work. So, oh boy. 12 goblin warriors, all chasing after dusk. Yeah, so we are... <laughs> we are just going to have to keep on moving like this. We are nearly at the tower, which is great. Uh, I'm just going to keep on waiting, get our stamina back up as we can. Alright, so... If we can battle them on the stairs, I'd be happy with that. Look at them all. We could take our pistol out as well and just start taking some pops at them with that. Um, that's not a bad option. Let's go and draw that out for now. Okay, all right. They may be able to climb. For all I know, they may just try and climb here. All right, 24 damage. I will take that. That's good. We'll go for another regular aimed shot at you. Uh, one more of those. That is a dead goblin. Okay, so there is a strong chance that they are going to get through here. Um, so we'll just do as much as we possibly can. Do these regular aim shots. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? We have man hacks. We have man hacks. Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. We are going to run away from that side. Uh, we are going to mount this wall briefly. And we're going to go and activate those man hacks. Oh my god. Okay, that took way too long for us to do that. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it takes us a bit. I wanted to try and get the manhex outside, but alas, here we are. If they get inside, then we've still got manhex that are floating around. Let's turn on our light real quick. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. Okay. Right. Right. Sweet. The manhex can fly though, so it looks like they are hitting something. Wonderful. Good job, guys. You're doing fantastic. Uh, let's just see what we, else we have available to us right now. Don't worry, I won't forget about the rifle. We will keep that in mind. I'm not sure if the spells are going to get them um, through, through the fence line, but I mean, we can certainly try, can't we? Our focus is terrible though. That's the issue here. Jolt has an arc of 30 degrees, a range of three. Can we do it out in that direction there? Yeah, we cast Jolt, but we really, we just don't get them. That one just bled to death, it looks like. Oh, man. You know what? Let's get elevated, because then I think we'll actually be able to see over the fence, and we may be able to get them that way. Um, so, let's have a look at Toxtricity. Range of seven, which is really decent. Uh, okay, need our hands free. Of course we do. Let's go put that away for now, then. Go to Toxtricity. And have a look at doing that down here. Because I'm assuming that's where they are currently. Do we need to see where we're striking? Uh, we cast it. We cast it then. Okay, let's head back down. See if that actually worked. It's very hard to tell if it did or not. Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to throw a flare over there. I think that that's a good way for us to determine. Uh, and also just be able to see what's kind of going on. Oh, because look what's happening here. We climbed up there, and we end up over here. Yeah, weird cataclysm staircase things. Okay, so we are going to activate this flare here, and... Okay, we can see a little bit further already. Let's look at throwing uh, the flare over here. Can we do that? Okay, we... we Mm, we kind we kind of did. It's down by the fence now. But we're not really seeing all that far, but that that's kind of the spot that we'd want to try and strike. And we were seeing a little bit better for a moment. Then toxicity. We have just enough mana to cast it again. Stop casting. Uh, no, ignore distractions. And now, yeah, we can see a lot better now. We can see this whole group over here. Let's try and get this thing going. We lose our concentration, so we will try yet again. Okay, we're going for like the greatest concentration that we can find. That's probably about as good as we're going to get. We lose concentration yet again. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> we will get it. It's a 57% chance that we, uh, you know, fail. Oh, that was a success though. That was a success. I just don't know if it's actually uh, going off or not. It looks like maybe, because there are a few that are damaged, but uh, can't be certain. These slingers are the ones that really need to go down first. So let's go draw out our combat pistol, and we're going to have a look at targeting that one there. Honestly, we can go straight up towards the fence here. I think that's just the easiest way for us to do that. What I would give for a spear right now, just to be able to attack them straight through here. But heavy bleeding, I mean, that one will die, but we'll just we'll just make sure of that. It will head on over towards the other. We don't want to de deactivate that. Let's just leave that man hack alone for now. And we've only got six mana right now. 
Oh damn, we'll go for regular aim, it malfunctions. Unfortunate, let's try that again. Good, decent, 30 damage. One more shot, reflects off of its hide. Minor bleeding isn't good enough for me. There we go, we got it dead. On towards the next one here. So it seems like their cudgels and their strength aren't enough to get through the fence, at least not easily. So that's kind of working out for us. One more good shot, did it there. Okay, so who else have we got? Just goblin warriors. Um, I feel like we might have had some of the slingers. Yep, there's one there at the moment. The manhack just did a good shot at that one. Okay, so let's just go back around the corner here for a moment. Let's have a look at reloading this. Okay, fantastic. Let's head back outside. And we're gonna go straight for that slinger. Okay, 16 damage there. Another, and let's go again. Grazing strike, come on. You can do this, Dusk. A few regular aim shots. We're getting close here. We need another though. There we go. Good stuff. Yeah, they're not uh, they're, ne they're not getting through this fence line. And I do think that that was the last of the gunners, possibly. The manhacks still seem to be doing work. They're kind of just diving in and out as manhacks do. That one just killed that one. So, yeah. <laughs> the, the goblins are hard to strike, but the manhacks... Um, <laughs> the manhacks are doing their job. It looks like one of them might have been damaged here. Yeah. Okay, so we could just keep popping them with our pistols because uh, we're looking at a lot of them here. Um, the other option we could do is try to kind of lure them into fighting us in a place like this. If we could kind of back into a corner there, face them one by one, that would be the best shot that we possibly have. We need to get rid of this moderate pain though before we try and do anything like that. So we are going to take some Tremadol to start to try and kick that back. Um, I am also going to try and take a caffeine pill just to try and offset some of the, uh, the tiredness that we're currently feeling. Um, yeah, there's no way we can open this fence just as is. So yeah, we could we could create an opening for them. We could even try and face them just by that opening, trying to knock them as they come through, but they can very quickly just kind of flood the area around there. So what we'd want to do is destroy it and then just get back as soon as possible. So let's maybe look at doing that here because I don't even think that they're trying to destroy it right now. I mean, they might be. Okay, we need to make sure that we are getting our stamina back before anything else. This may, this may be a big mistake. Um, let's actually just back off entirely and we'll turn off our light just for a moment. Stand in that darkness and let's go use our electrical discharge. Use our Voltaic strikes. We will catch our breath as well. And then we are going to enhance our strength for a moment because uh, we want to try and knock down this fence as fast as we can. Okay, that's good strength. That's good strength. Let's uh, get our breath back first, just so we've got lots of stamina to work with. And then we'll try and knock this one down here. Okay. Oh, damn it. That's the, the combat pistol. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, that kind of explains that. All right. Power will smash there. Not quite enough to do it. Okay. I'm just trying to be very cautious for our stamina. There we go. All right. You got a way in. Let's let's go. Let's go conga line. Follow, <laughs> follow this way here. We got our Tai Chi ready. We got our fists ready. Okay, backing into here. Are they going to keep on following? Oh, they sure are. Dusk prepares herself. Ready to face whatever comes through here. Hitting them with a palm strike. The bodies will start to pile up. One by one, they make their way towards the entrance here. Ready to face her. Murder in their eyes. A rage that Dusk is matching with her own. The Voltaic strikes are great here because we are stunning them. And because of all of the proficiencies and things like that we've got right now, we stand the best chance of fighting longer with our fists. We know how to conserve our stamina in a fight like this. And we are certainly going to need to do that considering the numbers that are here. But I mean, they're filtering in really, really well. Okay, we've got yet another down here. Uh, it was by itself and that surely can't be all of them. I think the others might have gone charging off after the the manhacks that were around. Let's start to check these bodies here. I mean, if they did have any denarii on them, we should have been picking that up as we we're kind of moving around here, but we will be certain of that. And we'll also try and see if there is anything else that can actually fit us. Most of it though, will just be too small. Yeah, no, nothing that we would want on any of them here. But I do want to be certain that we've got them all and I mean we very nearly do we've got one on the outskirts there so heading back out here check this body just pennies and a cudgel on that one 
Come on, Dusk, let's take that one down. Very nice. Golfing gloves on that one. Interesting. I think we have to thank our man hacks for assisting us there. Let's have a look at this photograph. It is in a resplendent interior view of a nightclub. Interesting. As to why the goblin has that, I don't know. Perhaps it is goblins that we're seeing in the picture there, but I think it's probably more than likely that the goblin uh, took these things from some of the others that are around. I am kind of half tempted to grab a sling to see if we could uh, just ping goblins with that in the future. But honestly, if we had our rifle there, uh, we would have been able to pretty quickly take them out. But it's good to know that we can take them out in large numbers when we are having to face them like that. We've got a training pistol there. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to go through, check the rest of these bodies. Hey, we'll see if we automatically pick this up, because we should. Uh, there's another telescoping umbrella on this one here. Okay, so let's just walk past. We pick up that Daenerys. Wonderful. So we don't always have to worry about checking every single body. But, I mean, hey, caffeinated chewing gum is always going to be fun. So we'll check that when we can. We've got some homeopathic pills here. And, oh, all right, decent cash card on that one. So I think, I think that's potentially all of them. I think the next move for us here will be to head back in the direction that we came from because there could always there could always be stragglers. We'll turn safe mode on here. We'll start to head up towards where those wargs were. Um, okay. Oh boy. We still have a troll. Yeah. <laughs> of course. The troll that's by our rifle. Okay. Let's start to lure them all back down this way here. The troll... Uh, the troll, if we can just try and climb the fence before it gets to us, we may be able to try and get it from the other side of the fence here. We'll take our pistol back out, draw it, get ready to fire at the sucker as it comes closer. There is a strong chance it might just knock down the fence, like uh, in, you know, a few strikes, but this is a way for us to find that out. Uh, we can kind of stand here and just take a few good shots. I would like to go for a regular aim if possible. Let's see. Okay, the troll seems a little healthier. Yeah, it is going to be healing relatively quickly. Fire would help us here. Heavy arterial bleeding, though, is pretty decent. So we're just going to keep on hitting it with as many bullets as we possibly can. Um, <laughs> yeah, this thing, it's still going. And those are all the bullets that we have at the moment for that. Um, let's try and see if we can maybe hit it with a mind hammer. See how much we can do with that. I do wonder if we might be able to send it reeling backwards as well. That was pretty decent. 62 damage from that mind hammer. Wow, we pummeled it. Um, let's try and see if we can chuck out another one of those. Slamming it into the ground, 32 damage. It's good, but it is going to be healing. And I don't think we can get our stamina back fast enough to try and deal with that. So let's back down here for now. Let's go and get some more magazines in here. And oh man, it is back to full health. Okay, the troll is a little bit of a problem. The goblin warriors, less so. I think we can probably just stand here, take some regular aim shots. Ideally, not at the troll. We want to be going for these goblin warriors, first of all. If we can take them out, then I would be a little bit more comfortable with us trying to face this troll in melee. I don't know how strong it's going to be, but I'm assuming it's going to be pretty strong. It doesn't seem to be able to get through the fence just yet though, so that's giving me at least a little glimmer of hope. We're going to put our discharge on yet again, and we'll go for those voltaic strikes, or try to. Okay, alright, we caught our breath there. I heard something die briefly. It definitely wasn't the troll. It is now just regular bleeding. Um, okay. <laughs> Right, let's go put this combat pistol away. We have Tai Chi at the ready. Okay, how bad is this going to be? How bad is this going to be? Well, what we could also do is try and lure it up the tower and then push it off the edge. That is also an option. Yeah. All right, well, let's take our first strike. We stab it. Okay, we bite it. We hit it. And the question is, if it hits us, well, it's grabbed us. So that's not great. I think we'll probably try and push it back because I don't like being grabbed by it. So we're going to go for a four shove. Hopefully we can push it. Ooh, boy, we can't. Okay, but we managed to break that grab then. Okay, I think we're probably going to try and see if we can go for that uh, pushing it route. We have a few more goblin warriors here as well, it seems. Okay, let's start to go up here. All right, let's see if it follows. Okay, we can see a troll briefly. Uh, if I head onto the stairs here, can we... Oh, we can take strikes at it. Okay, I, I like that. Fighting it on the stairs seems to be the best option for us. It's having a hard time getting towards us at the moment, so let's just keep on striking. It is healing as we're doing this, though. 
but Dusk is just slicing and dicing. We don't see a hostile creature. The troll dies. Dusk, you bloody legend. And so I'm not even sure where that body is exactly. It's around here somewhere. It's over here. Bruised corpse of a troll. Let's make sure that that is well and truly dead. Now the goblin warriors down here. Um, let's get ready to face them. Dusk, let's go jump over that. We're going to turn off our light source. And let's see. Goblin warriors, let's get ready to go. All right, face that first one as it starts to come around the corner there. Spinning to attack the next. Okay, we've already got two of them down, it looks like. Uh, we were hurt. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, we weren't actually getting affected by the electrical cloud. Just going to crack open these wallets here. See if there's anything worthwhile inside. There is a Daenerys in that one there. And that is a Goblin Warrior that's around here. I'm just intrigued to see if we'll pick it up automatically as we start to move past them. Uh, yes, we did pick one up then. That's good. Okay, I think, I think we've done it. We need to get back to our rifle still before anything else. So let's not start a workout. Let's turn on safe mode and start to head back in the direction of where our stuff is. We're going to keep our light on though, just to make sure that we don't miss anything. Um, we need to make sure that all of these bodies here are going to be bashed. These uh, locusts, first of all, and then the wargs. I'm not sure where the rest of those wargs went. Yeah, unsure about that. We're going to pick up that rifle. We're going to make sure that we reload that put some new ammunition back in there and then I think we should just be able to put that back into our pack yeah there we go wonderful now wargs where were you it has to be in an area that we've been so far so let's just try and follow the trail of blood around and see if we can't track them down yeah see it wasn't down here so it must have been up further I mean we dropped the rifle right so yeah it's got to be up this way and sure enough it is is that a warg body Yup. Okay, so we're going to make sure that we smash those. We've done a good job there. And heading back up towards where all of this started. Okay, we've got a brainless zombie up there. Following more of that blood trail. And we have yet another troll. Okay, well, we know that we can deal with trolls. And Dusk is going to have to. But that... Legionnaires shall be in the next. I'd like to thank you for joining me for yet another episode of Cataclysm. For now though, I would like to thank you all for joining me for this action-packed episode. And I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.